way back to your seat this morning. My Lord, ain't he good? Ain't he good? Come on, if you're not standing, I would ask that you stand with me. My God, it's good to be here. Let's be reverent unto the Lord this morning. Father, we thank you for your spirit that we feel in this place. Father, we thank you that you're changing lives, God, that you're still setting men and women free. Father, we thank you that you are still on the throne. Father, I ask this morning that you would hide me behind the cross of your son, that he may be glorified. Anoint me, Lord, and most importantly, Holy Spirit, I cannot do this without you. Father, I love you, I praise you, and I give you all the honor and all the glory, and somebody's going to shout like you done lost your mind. Come on. Take five seconds. Give them five seconds as they as they have their seat. Just... Oh my God. My Lord, my Lord. I want to preach to you on the topic of silence. Look at somebody and say, silence. silence. The distraction. No, that wasn't the right person. Look at somebody else. Silence. The distraction. Listen, distraction is one of, if not my if not the most number one tool that the enemy uses against the children of God is distracting your mind off the goal off the telos the goal that God has set before you the purpose that he has placed in your life distraction at its core at its core at the nucleus at the center is anything, look at look at somebody and say anything. No, oh, I'm going to get into it this morning. Distraction at its core is anything that diverts attention from the task at hand or the goal that one has set before them. The Bible says you did run well. But who? Look at somebody and say who? Who did hinder you? Why? Because what we see is distraction comes in many different forms, Brother Mikey. I'm going to preach to you a little bit that distraction is always in disguise. Oh, Lord Jesus. How many knows that you can do good things in your life, but there's still a distraction on the walk that God has called you to do? How many knows that just because you... You, you cook for the church doesn't mean that God's called you to cook for the church. And if cooking from the church is taking you away from what he's called you to do, it's become a distraction in your life. My Lord. Listen, I want you to get this. The greatest danger today, today, the greatest danger for each one of us in this room is not that we will renounce God and turn away from him, but rather that you will become so distracted by this world that you will settle for only living a mediocre life. I want to say that to somebody again. Your biggest threat today is not that you're going to blaspheme and walk away from the love of God, but the biggest threat is that you're going to be so distracted by the world that you're not going to live in the exceeding abundant and the overflow of what God has called you to be. That's the biggest danger that we face today. It's not that we're going to just walk away. It's that we're not going to live in the fullness that God has called us to live in. How many will testify today and say, Pastor, you're right, I ain't been living in the fullness. But today starts a new. But first, but, but I've got to silence all the distractions in my life. And here's what some folk are going to have a, a hard time with. A lot of things that distract you from God are things that your flesh desires. A lot of things that, that distract you in your life are folks that they call family. A lot of things in your life that distract you are those things that you find pleasure in. So before I can start something new today, I've got to silence all the things that keep me from hearing and seeing. How many knows that distraction deals with all types of things, but one thing is vision? Brother Andrew. And I grew up ADHD. I ain't ashamed of it. I was medicated as a child. Yeah, your kid needs it too. I don't want to hear it. I see something shiny in it. My whole attention span shifts. And it's because my eyes seen something that distracted me. 
But it did not just stop with me seeing something. I began to understand that if I seen it and my head turned, how many knows that wherever your head goes? How many knows if you ride down the road and stare off out of the window too long, before long you're hitting the rumble strip? The same thing with your Christian walk. The distraction, once it gets in your vision, you become fixated on it. And without you even having to do anything, if you look at it too long, your whole body, your whole path begins to shift uh, to the thing that now has your attention. Try to walk and look off to the side without looking in front of you. I promise you, you'll begin to go that way. 1 Timothy in the 4th chapter. Here's what we got to get to. This distraction comes in many different forms. It comes in all types of, of colors. It comes in all types of shapes. It comes in all types of things. But Brother Andrew, it is usually disguised. And you don't even know that you have been distracted. Until you're so far off the path that you're lost. Mm, 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 mm. First Timothy, are you there? Has anybody in the room ever been distracted? How many are ready to silence it this morning? Mm. My first point is doctrine or distraction. I, I want to. I want to get own homemade theology and self-proposed danger this morning but my first point here is doctrine or distraction 1 Timothy 4 are you with me Paul's writing to a young man named Timothy who's fixing to take the mantle of Paul because Paul knows that his time is at hand he's already said I'm ready to be poured out like a drink offering but before I go I've got to pass it to somebody that can run with the vision and listen to what he says in the fourth chapter in the first verse. He says, Now the Spirit expressly says that in later times some will depart from the faith. Look around. By devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teaching of demons through the insincerity of liars whose consciences are seared. Let me tell you one of the most big, the, one of the most deadly things that we have in church today is preachers. Doc, one of the biggest dangers that we face is men and women that proclaim a gospel but ain't been called to do it. Oh. oh. It's YouTube theology, dangerous. It's TikTok theology, dangerous. And it distracts you from the truth. So what we need to understand here is that distraction sometimes dresses up like church. Sometimes what we need to understand is just because it shows up on Sunday morning with, with Prada high heels in the nicest dress you've ever seen don't mean that it's sanctified and it's righteous. Just because the man preaches good and he's got good words don't mean that it's good doctrine. We've become scholars and theologians through the base of social media, through the base of YouTube, from people that have nothing other than an agenda to distract you from really what God has called you to do. Some people looking at me like I'm crazy. Yeah, you're right. The biggest distraction sometimes is men and women that stand behind this sacred desk, and it's a shame. That's why I tell people all the time, they ask me, who do you listen to preaching? I'm very careful about who I listen to because you ain't fixing to distract me. And I understand this morning that this might not be the most popular message because I'm really fixing to stomp some toes, okay? But you can't tell me, you can't stand up in this pulpit and tell me that we can no longer talk about the blood of a lamb. You can no longer, you can't tell me that we're no longer able to speak of the cross of Christ, him crucified. You can't tell me all these things because it's a distraction. 
Don't tell me that God is okay with homosexuality. It's a distraction. Uh-oh. Oh, preach that, right? But it's, it, uh, uh, the dangerous thing is it's from people that we are supposed to be able to trust. The distraction happens when you open up your mind to anybody and everybody to feed you. Oh, Lord Jesus. I'm going to tell on the whole church right here. We used to do cooks, whatever they was, down there in the fellowship hall. And 20 people would be going around like it was a secret. Who cooked that? No, who cooked that right there? Which one? Which one? Which one? The blue crock pot? No, the black crock pot. Who cooked? I don't know. I ain't eating that one. Call me a liar. I dare you too. Everybody walk around. They give you a warning too. Uh uh, girl, I seen that mac and cheese. I don't know about that. So we we are cautious. My mama would not eat at a buffet. Would not. Refused. She would not eat at a buffet. We are so cautious about what we put in our physical bodies. But we'll let any Tom, Dick, and Harry tell us and preach to us. Yeah, you. People say you got to be careful of post biblical stuff. You don't even know what biblical is. Allowing anybody to feed your spirit man that becomes a distraction in your spirit because it does not align with the word and then it becomes convoluted. It becomes confusing. Why? Because your spirit is revolting against the mess that you're allowing to be placed in it. Remember, Jesus said it's really not what goes in that defiles you is what comes out. But how many knows if you eat garlic green beans for two or three weeks in a row, when you begin to sweat, you're going to stink like garlic green beans. Trust me. Distractions come in many different outfits. They come in many different ways. They come through the form of people. You don't think people have been set in your life to distract you? Go to Walmart. Go to Walmart. See if you don't get distracted. Hmm? They come through the form of social media. Here's the big one. They come through the form of situations that you will face. The church, though, has become so distracted from this that the truth now looks like a lie did you hear what I just told you that the truth has become a lie because we have been so distracted from the truth that's a dangerous place to be when we can no longer understand and see how we have been distracted and we shun away the truth of God oh man You'll have if you preach if you preach biblical truth, I promise you you'll have people leave your church. Bye. Bye. See you. Distractions are always or most often, Brother Mikey, also disguised. Have you ever had a distraction show up and announce itself as a distraction? Y'all ever had a, a robber come in and say, Hey, I'm fixing to rob you. Jesus actually says it. Hey, if he knows he's coming, he's going to be ready for it. But he never comes when, when you're prepared. He never announces himself. He never tells you, hey, tomorrow I'm going to distract you. And I'm going to get you in your flesh. And I'm going to get you raging mad. And you're going to be cussing going down the road. And you're going to be flipping the California howdy to everybody and blowing your horn. He never tells you. But he also almost always comes in a disguise in the book of Luke. It's sad that we're distracted by pastors that have twisted the truth, twisted the doctrine. But it's also sad that we are disguised, we, we are distracted by folks that we think we can trust. But they're really a distraction in. Disguise. Are you with me in the 
book of Luke in the 10th chapter. You read it? 10 and 38. Luke 10 and 38. Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And as she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha... But Martha was distracted with much serving. Now, I want you to understand and I want you to watch this. Martha is still doing a good work. Uh-oh. This is dangerous right here because you have people come up and say, No, I ain't cleaning the church no more. I can't be distracted, Pastor. Yet she's still operating. She's still moving. She's still working to a good purpose. But at the same time, she's still distracted. Miss Kim, we see it a lot in church today where people, you're busy. You're moving. You're churching. You're singing. You're clapping. But you are distracted. And what we'll see here in just a minute as Martha's being busy and she's doing the things that the world says is customary. Her attitude begins to change. Her emotions begin to get involved. It says here that she is distracted serving but the other sister is where she needs to be. She's at the feet of Jesus. But listen here, it says, And Martha was distracted with much serving, and she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. How many feels like Martha sometimes? Anybody in here got a little bit of anxiety in your life? The smallest thing, the smallest thing becomes the biggest distraction. Brother, Brother Mikey, here's the thing. When we allow a distraction to raise up in our life, it blocks the view of God's promises. So here's Martha. She's getting upset now. I understand. I'd have been mad too. I'd have been mad too. Don't act like you wouldn't. Yeah, absolutely. She begins to be emotional and mad and then she goes to him and she says, Hey, why aren't you telling her to help me? He says, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. How many knows that you could get caught up? And, and I'm the world's worst about this. How many work a job? Praise God for you. Amen. When we allow so many things to distract us, like our kids. I love my kids. I love y'all. Our wife, our husband, our marriage. What truly has the right to distract us from God? Hmm? So let me ask you a question. What is distracting you? What is pulling you away from God? We'll see here in the book of 2 Kings. I want to read this story to you. 2 Kings 19. What has the ability or the right, the authority to distract you from focusing on God? Is it your kids? Is it your marriage? Is it your job? No. Is it things that, that come against you? How many ever got a bad report from the doctor? Is it distracting? Hmm? How many ever got that bill in the mail you know you can't pay? 
Oh, I got a bunch of amens on that one. I thought y'all said y'all had a job. Second Kings 19, are you there? Silence the distraction. Let me give you some context before I start preaching to you. Can I preach to you this morning? Can I come out of this coat? Ignore the sweat stain. Big boy sweat. Amen. There's this guy named Sennacherib. Y'all can say that. Sennacherib. And when I was going through Bible college, Brother Andrew, I learned that I can't pronounce these things, so I, I write them down as they sound. Sennacherib, like a rib you eat. Sennacherib. But there's this guy, his name's King Sennacherib, and he's the king of Assyria. And they today are some of the most brutal people that have ever been recorded. They would take pregnant women, abort babies while the mother was alive make them watch the murder of the child and then leave the mother there. Not kill her, they just leave her there. That type of people. The type of people that impaled people and all these horrendous things. And now he's come against Hezekiah, the king of Judah, the, the king of God's people. And he has sent a messenger to Hezekiah and this is what he says in 2 Kings 19, verse number 10. Thus shall you speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah. Do not let your God in whom you trust deceive you by promising that Jerusalem will not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. How many knows that distractions in your life want to tell you that you can't look to God for the answer? Your distractions want to tell your mind that the distraction is bigger than your God. So now King Sennacherib has sent a messenger to Hezekiah. And he says, hey, look, I'm coming for you. And don't even worry, don't even bother about trusting in God because he can't help you against me in this situation. How many has ever been in a situation that you sometimes felt, God, can you handle this? How many has ever gotten that bad doctor report? Say, God, I, 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 mm, y'all know what I'm talking about. How, how, how have you ever dealt with the things in your life? How? Without placing your trust in God. So Hezekiah, one of the only few good kings, Crystal. The book of Kings and Judges was a mess. If you look through history, Judges, 1st and 2nd Kings, it was a mess. They didn't have hardly any good leadership about like our president now Lord did I say that <laughs> they teach you in Bible school too stay out of politics tonight forgive me but Hezekiah is one of the good kings and what Hezekiah has done up until this point is has, he has trusted in the Lord through every distraction in his life but now Sennacherib writes a letter and says do not let your God in whom you trust deceive you by promising that Jerusalem will not be given into the hand of King Sennacherib or King of Syria. You know, the distraction, the problem, whatever it is, family issues, children issues, marital issues, it wants you to think that the God that you serve has no power over the thing that has come against you. I ain't got that type. Somebody, you need to learn to tell the devil to shut up, but he's still a liar. And, and it's a good thing that he wrote this letter to King Hezekiah because it would have offended me if he wrote this letter to me. And I would have got upset. And there's still a little redneck buried somewhere down on the inside. And I would have just had to write a letter in response back to King Sennacherib. And I would have had said pretty much like David said, I slew the young lion and the bear. And this circumcised Philistine shall be as one of them. Anybody know what I'm talking about? If God brung me out one time, 
No, I'll preach all by myself and allow him to stir up the gift of remembrance in my own life. But if he brung me out one time, I know that he's not going to leave me. He said he would never leave nor forsake me, but I know that God will come through. He who promised is still faithful. Sennacherib told Hezekiah, you need to give up. Have you ever met my God? What, you're telling me to give up? Because of you, the same God that parted the Red Seas, the same God that busted water out of a rock, the same God that told the sun to stand still, and I should be worried about you. What kind of distraction in your life should you be destroyed? Should you be worried about? So Zacharias says, you need to give up now. Here I come. And Hezekiah has a choice. Listen, you always have a choice. And as bad as what we try to do, as bad as what we want to do, we always try to point blank, point a finger, find a scapegoat to push the problem off to. But the problem really lies with us. And once we can get that, that we had a choice to make. Hezekiah had a choice. He could either say, you know what? I'm going to forget all the things that God has done for me in my past. Like the time the prophet told me that I was going to die, but I cried out to God. He said, I'm going to bless you with 15 more years. I have a choice and I can forget all of the times that God has been who he was. I can choose to forget of what he's already done in my life. Y'all ought to be shouting me down because this is the route we take most of the time. And I'm going to throw in the towel. And I'm going to say, you know what, problem? You're too big for me. You know what, problem? You're right. I can't win against you. So I'm just going to accept Acceptance is terrible sometimes. I'm just going to accept the fact that I can't do nothing with you. Or we have a choice to do what Hezekiah does and say, ah, that just don't sit too well with me. So after the letters wrote, listen to what happens. Verse number 11, behold, you have heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all the lands, devoting them to destruction. And shall you be delivered? Have the gods of the nation delivered them? The nations that my fathers destroyed, Gozan, Haran, Respa, and the people of Eden who were in Telassar. Woo, I did good. Where is the king of Hamath and the king of Arpad and the king of the city of Seraphim, the king of Hena and the king of Avah? When Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it, and Hezekiah phoned five different people. Hezekiah got on Facebook and made a post. Hezekiah called the doctor and told him to up the ante on the milligrams. No, what Hezekiah did was he went up to the house of the Lord and spread it. See, see what you got, what you got here is the enemy has come to distract Hezekiah from the past. What is the past? The past is a testimony that God has seen me through everything in my life and this situation is not going to be any different. So we took it to the house of the Lord. Amen. This is, ooh -wee. I know about your problem before you know about it. Before the distraction had time to ferment in his mind, he took it to the only place that could do something with it. How many knows that Facebook can't, can't help you? You'll get 42 people on there that think they know how to help you. Bad advice. The Bible says that if the blind lead the blind, 
They'll both fall into a ditch. I see it all the time. People say, I've got this symptom, and you'll have a hundred people on there, Brother Andrew, telling them some type of concoction. And the concoction is more dangerous than what their the symptoms are. Like there ain't no way you're gonna drink that, are you? Well, yeah. Why? Because Mikey told me to drink it. Mikey's a mortician. <laughs> He's not a doctor. If I was wanting to talk about dead people stuff, yeah, Mikey. But when my life's on the line, when the problem is something that, Rick, you can't help it. Babe, you can't fix it. It's bigger than any of y'all and any of me. I've got no need to go to Mikey. I've got to take it to the king. I've got to take it to the ultimate physician. And Hezekiah said, I know exactly what to do with this letter to silence the distraction that has come into my life. I've got to take it to the altar. Oh, man, I remember when I was a little boy. The altar was a sacred space. The altar was a place of holy ground. The altar was a place where lives were changed and, and wrongs were made right and regret was overturned and broken hearts were healed. And I remember that the saints used to, used to know that there was something special about coming to this place. The Bible says what happened to the prophets that would weep between the porch and the and the altar. Hezekiah must have known it because he went directly there with the distraction. Can you imagine that letter? Huh? Can you imagine that letter coming to your your? Now this ain't just your neighbor that you threw leaves on his grass and he gonna whoop up on you. This is a king of the world power, Assyria. That's saying, I'm coming for you. And I'm going to destruct everything that's in front of me. My Lord, you let us get a stomach pain. <laughs> Hezekiah received a letter from the hand of the messengers and he read it. And Hezekiah went to the house of the Lord and he spread it before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord, the God of Israel enthroned above the cherubim, you are the God, you alone of all the kingdoms of the earth. He says, I, I not only are you the God of Israel and Jerusalem, but you are still the king of the problem that is over all the kingdoms of the earth. 16, incline your ear, O Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see, and hear the words of Sennacherib, which he has sent to mock the living God. Truly, O Lord, the kings of Assyria have laid waste the nations of their lands and have cast their gods into the fire. For they were not gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore they were destroyed. So now, O Lord, God save us please from his hand that all the kingdoms of the earth may know oh Lord that you are God and you are God alone I don't know about you but a distraction is also just a setup for God to be glorified and manifested in your situation yeah, it took everybody out before me, but there's a difference between me and them. What's the difference? I am saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. What's the difference? I'm a king's kid. Yeah. Pastor Parsley tells this story. He was on an airplane. Y'all know I don't fly. They be talking to me all the time about flying here, flying there. No, if you want me to come preach, it better be in driving distance. Because God has not distracted me with getting on an airplane yet. Not called me. Not called me. He would have gave me wings. Lord, please, don't make me. I'm terrified, God, of an airplane. I, don't, I can't get out of it. But Pastor Parsley said he was flying somewhere with Dr. Lester Summerall. He said, he's awake, that Dr. Lester Summerall's asleep. Peaceful as peaceful can be. 
Pastor Parza said the plane starts going through the worst turbulence that he's ever experienced still to this day. And he's done a lot of flights. And he was praying because he knew for sure the plane was crashing. And he said something to the sleeping Dr. Lester Summerall. Peaceful as peaceful can be. And he says, are you not worried that the plane is going down? Dr. Lester Summerall said, no, the plane ain't going down. Parsley said, how you know? He said, because I'm on it. <laughs> because I'm on the plane, God's not called me to die here in this airplane. The distraction can't be bigger than the focus that God has on your life. If he's called you to preach to the nations, that's where it's going to end. If he's called you to go out into the community, that's where it's going to end. Don't let a distraction turn your head. Ooh, I'd, have been, I'd have been losing my mind. But anyway, we see here that he says, Lord, I know that you're going to get glory through this distraction that's coming my way. After Hezekiah got done praying and spreading, here's another beautiful thing, Crystal. It never says anything about him picking that letter back up. He spread it out and gave it. Here's our problem. Anybody ever seen him? Oh, ooh, ooh, I, I just don't know. I don't know if I can live without that. I, I, I don't know. That sin is awful strong. I've seen people lay it down and pick it up all in the same motion just thinking nobody's seen what you just did Hezekiah took the distraction and he left it because here's the problem if you pick it back up it's still a distraction in your life but if you place it in the hands of God it's no longer a distraction why because when you look you don't see the problem you still see God is the distraction still going to be there? Possibly. But when I look, I don't see it. I only see God and his provisions. Hmm. Where's Brother Josh at? Come here, big fella. Come here, Wyatt. Wyatt is my distraction. How fitting. How fitting. But as long as I carry my distraction around, it's always going to bother me. And depending on your distraction, he's a little distraction. I don't know. I don't know. He's pretty good at it. But as long as I've got him here, I can never forget. You know what I'm saying? It's, it would be hard to forget that I've got him attached to my head. This is where he is all the time, too, right here. You're really not a distraction like that, buddy. I love you. Quit fighting with me now. But it doesn't matter where you position the distraction in your life. Stand behind me now. It's always there. Here's what we try to do. We try to wear in different areas. Of our... But it's still there. Amen. It doesn't matter. We, we can headlock it. <laughs> but it's still there. And here's the problem. When we place it somewhere, we place it where we still have a look. We still got access. We... We can still reach it and touch it if we think God's not doing it the way that God should be doing it and that, that we can get back in there and fix the problem and fix the distraction. Until you remove it. What did I say at the beginning? Distractions have a lot to do with Until you can remove it to where you can no longer see it. Because this is your distraction and guess who he is? He's God. Really? 
really though, the problem is still there. He's working on it. Because a lot of people say, God, I gave it to you, but the bad doctor report is still there. Yeah, but if you truly give it to him when you look, you'll only see him. What are you talking about, cancer? Yes, I got cancer, but when I look, I can just see how God is working it. What are you talking about, money problems? Yes, I got money problems, but when I look, I only see how God, he says he would supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. When I look, I no longer see the problem. I see the problem solver. See, but if you pick it up, Tell them how old you are, boy. Eleven. He's eleven. I need somebody else. I need somebody else. Come here, Abby. Can I hold you? Can I hold you? Come here. This is my niece. Everybody say, hey, Abby. Hey, Abby. This is how my distraction started. It was manageable. I could deal with it. Because it wasn't that big of a distraction. It was just a beer here and there. Hmm. It was just a little hit off a joint here and there. I, 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 I did good with it see around okay there's God still there I could see around the distraction but as time went on but as time got on the distraction got bigger and, and I can't manage it as good as I once was. Why? Because it's getting a little bit too heavy for me. <laughs> hey, I, I used to be able to do something with it, but I can't. I, it's getting harder to see. And before long, What's even the point? I ain't throwing my back out, y'all. <laughs> but but you, you did do good with it. And you learned how to bounce the fence. And you allowed the distraction not to be much of a distraction. It was almost like wearing sunglasses. You could still see, but it was a little bit dim. But as you let that thing go, the distraction become more important in your life than seeing the path that God was calling you to walk down. And it got a little bit heavier to balance. And, and before you know it, you wasn't even serving God anymore. Why? Because the distraction was so big, you couldn't even see that God loved you. Before long, the sickness... The distraction become a reality in my life. Y'all give Josh a hand and quiet, Miss Abby. I've never seen a crack addict that was just a little bit of a crack addict. Y'all ever seen what? Y'all ever seen that? Huh? No. I've never seen a fentanyl addict be just a little bit of a fentanyl addict. But none of them started as an addict. It bloomed into an addiction when the distraction of the drug and the drink and the women and the men. It grew as an addiction when the distraction becomes so big that you can no longer see truth. So he 
he's got this thing and he's got it laid out on the altar before God and he walks away from it. It ain't my problem. What you mean, Pastor, it ain't your problem. See, around here we call it family. Around here we call it family. What are you talking about? When I surrendered my life to him, I become adopted. He's not giving me the spirit of fear, but adoption, whereby I cry, Abba, Father. Which means that if I'm adopted into the family, if I'm an heir, then a joint heir. Have you met my brother? Have you met my daddy? It ain't my problem. When you come against me, you're just not only coming against me. You're coming against the kingdom. You're coming against Yahweh. You're coming against the Holy Ghost. You're coming against my church. You're coming against my brothers and sisters in Christ. It ain't my problem anymore. Here's what we do, Brother Mike. We fight it alone. How many has ever fought something by yourself? that not even your spouse knows. I remember I used to have to fight hell off my life. I'd get up in the middle of the night and go out of the bedroom and fight it on my own. You ain't got to do that. That distraction that you got ain't got to be fought by yourself. You just got to lay it down. Sennacherib got this message, and y'all seen what he did with it. He took it. Before Facebook, before you called your homegirl, your homeboy. He took it straight to God. Straight to him. And he laid it out. Then Isaiah, the prophet, brung a message back. Look at somebody and say, he can turn it around. After he laid it out, 20, then, the, then Isaiah the son of Amos sent to Hezekiah saying, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, your prayer to me about Sennacherib, king of Assyria, I have heard. This is the word that the Lord has spoken concerning. We need to get an attitude. Let's see what my daddy's got to say about it. Let's see who has the last word in this conversation. Sometimes the most beautiful thing that you can ever do is win a conversation, win an argument, and never have to open up your mouth. Why? Because the blood's going to testify on my behalf. Why? Because the word is going to speak on my behalf. Why? I ain't got to do nothing. I just got to stand still and get ready for the checkered flag to wave. Why? Because victory. Hezekiah didn't do nothing. Sorry, Brother Andrew. He says, I put the microphone down and nobody can hear me on the internet. You should be here. <laughs> All he did was surrender it. Skip over with me to verse 29 and I'm fixing to close. So the Lord starts going in. Man, he goes in. Sennacherib here's what I find beautiful about the word is we can see emotion in these letters in these, these places where God moves and God writes and God is speaking we can see that he has passion for his people ain't that beautiful here when he is speaking through Isaiah the prophet about Hezekiah, he has passion. And he says, wait a minute, don't worry about it because you're mine and I'm going to do something about it. All you got to do is stand still. So verse number 27, he says, and this shall be a sign for you. Verse 27, 29, I'm sorry. And this shall be a sign for you this year. Eat what grows of itself. And in the second year, what springs of the same? Then in the third year, sow and reap and plant vineyards and eat their fruit. And the surviving remnant of the house of Judah shall again take root downward and bear fruit upward. 
For out of Jerusalem shall go a remnant, and out of the Mount Zion a band of survivors. The zeal of the Lord will do this. Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning King Sennacherib, King Distraction, King Naysayer, King Backbiter, King David Downer, King all these things, King depression, anxiety, this is what the Lord speaks to it. He shall not come into this city or shoot an arrow at it. How Chris Durso preached it ain't a problem. It just sounds like one. It ain't really a problem. Why? Brother Mike? Because it's got no authority to be a problem. Oh, come here, wife. I need you again, son. Now, he might be really mad. Right? He might be really mad. But he ain't but about 65 pounds. And no matter how he hollers, how he acts, how he yells, it just really sounds like a problem. But it ain't really a problem. See, what you got to understand is your distraction, your problem really doesn't have authority to do anything in your life unless you allow it to. You have opened up access for the distraction to sway your mind. But just as you opened up access, you also have the authority to deny access to the thing that has distracted you. Somebody, you need to learn to say deny. Access, deny. Access, deny. Access, deny. It ain't really a problem with you crock shoes on. You just sound like a problem. You, you just, you just kind of, you kind of look like a problem, but you ain't really a problem. Why? Because you're 60 pounds, I'm 200 and something pounds. You are bigger than your problem is. Sit down, wife. You ain't a problem. Stand with me. said, hey, he ain't even going to shoot an arrow at this place. Why? Because you didn't handle it through Facebook. You didn't handle it through social media. You didn't talk to four or five people about it and, and, and do gossip. But because you brought the distraction to me and understood that it was time for the distraction to be silent. How many knows that distraction will speak to you? Huh? I'll show you. You ain't good enough. You're not good enough. You'll never make it. They, they don't like to hear you sing. You can't sing. Just sit down. Just sit down. You're not really a leader. Just sit down. You think you're something. Hmm? Access. Silence. It's time that you speak silence to the distraction in your life that is telling you that you can't, that you won't, that you never will. It's, I know shut up ain't a good word, but it's time to tell that thing to shut up. That little kids... Let me get you in trouble. It says by the way that that thing came, it's going to return the same. And it shall not come into the city, declares the Lord, for I will defend. I will defend this city to save it for my own sake and for the sake of my servant, David. God be for you. Who? Who? Who that? Who? If God be for you, who 
could ever stand against you. Whatever distraction, whatever problem, whatever issue could ever overtake God. It's time you tell that thing to shut up. Be silent with every head bowed and every eye closed. Father, we thank you this morning that you were bigger than the distraction. Father, I just pray right now that you would help us to understand, Lord, that they are distractions in this world. Father, that they come in many different forms and fashions. Some of them wear three-piece suits and a tie every Sunday. Father, some of them are, are bought on, a, on the ABC store shelf or whatever the distraction is. Father, I pray that you would let your people know, God, that you are bigger than any of them, that you're better than any of them. Father, I just pray right now, God, that you would pull the minds of your people back into a place of righteous living. Father, those distractions that disguise themselves, let them be opened and revealed to us. Father, give us the boldness and the courage and the authority to tell it to shut up and move on. Father, and I pray right now, if there's anybody in this place, Lord, that's been so distracted that they can't see you anymore, that they're so distracted, Lord, they don't know how to find you anymore. Father, I pray for those individuals this morning, Lord, that you would draw them back to this altar, the same place where Hezekiah laid down the distraction, where he laid down the problem, the issue. Let them know that you are still the God that answers that you are still the God that inclines your ear unto them, Lord. Father, draw them this morning with every head bowed and every eye closed. If that's you and you say, hey, preacher, man, I've been distracted. I'm so far down the rabbit hole, I don't know which way's up. I don't know if I'm coming or if I'm going, Lord. Would you come this morning? Would you come? Saints, be praying. If that's not you, but would you slip up your hand? You say, I don't want to get up there. Would you just raise up your hand and say, I've been distracted in the special needs before we close. Amen. Amen. Y'all give Brother Kenny a hand back here on the drum. I called Kenny about 30 minutes before church. I said, what you doing, Kenny? He said, I'm fixing to come to choir practice. I said, cancel that. You're